So diffraction and interference of the wave. In this session, we'll discuss how a diffracted wave from two slits can interfere. And we can have a Young's double slit experiment. So according to Young's double slit experiment, like example, if we have a single source, we pass through a barrier or a gap. As a result, the wave is diffracted. Here, di why diffraction is more? Because the wavelength is approximately equal to the gap size. When it passes through double slit, like two slits are there, two openings are there, that wave further diffracted. And as a result of these two diffracted wave, as they travel, they interfere at certain points and their interference leads to a combination of bright and dark regions. If we are getting a bright region, it means that there is a constructive interference that two waves increases the effect of each other. If we are getting a dark region, it means that part, the two waves cancel out the effect of each other. So if we say the distance between the slit and the screen is L, and we want to derive a formula that what will be the formula for constructive interference and what will be the formula for destructive interference in terms of part difference. So example, say uh, these are the two slits, slit 1, S1 and slit 2, S2. And we want to, we have a point P. We don't know what kind of interference. It can be constructive, it can be destructive. We want to find a relation here for formation of a constructive or destructive interference. So if there's a bright fringe, a bright region is there, what does it mean? It means in that case, the part difference should be n lambda. But if point P is a dark region, then it will be n plus half lambda. Now, what will be the part difference here in terms of length, how we can work out what will be the part difference? So example, we have these two waves. We know the distance between the screen and the slit is, the distance between the screen and the slit is L. And say this is a center. So from the center, or the central maxima, we can also say because we will always have a constructive interference. So from the central maxima or from the center, this distance is given by, like this distance is x. So we want to find a part difference between the two waves. So if I roughly sketch this figure again, like I have source 1 here, I have source 2 or slit 2 and they interfere at this point P. And P can be anywhere, like on the screen anywhere, it can be P. So the wave travel from source 1 to P, the distance traveled by wave from source 1 to P is known as S1P. And the distance traveled by wave from source 2 or slit 2 to P, that is known as s to p and if we want, we want to find a part difference basically part difference means the difference between them so we can say the part difference will be equal to s to p minus s1 p or it can be vice versa s1 p minus s2 p that will be the part difference and this part difference if there is a constructive interference when two waves interfere at this point if there is a constructive interference, so we can say that this part difference will be equal to n lambda. So n lambda is equal to S2P minus S1P. Or if there is a destructive interference, we can say n plus half lambda because that's a condition for destructive interference we discussed yesterday is equal to S2P minus S1P. Now, what is S2P minus S1P if we want to find this part? How we can work out? So 
what is the extra distance traveled when we compare like example s1p and s2p so what is the extra distance traveled by the wave so this part when i draw a perpendicular so this part this is the extra part which is covered by the wave 2 when we say like example this is a wave 1 and this one is wave 2 so this red part this is the extra part which is covered by wave 2 so we can say this is a part difference because remaining these two lengths are same but the extra part or extra distance which is covered by the wave that is known as this or represented by this red region now if you want to find this how we can work out example we know the distance between these slits the distance between s1 and s2 is known as d we can denote by d or a but normally in exam you will find it is re represented by d so you will also use the symbol d d means the distance between the two slits so the distance between the two slits this distance is d and here the angle which it is making example that is theta so if the distance is d and the angle is theta so now again we have a right angle triangle if you have a right angle triangle when i redraw this triangle so it appeared to be like this this is how it appeared in which this is so s1 source one is there source two and distance between them is d and here it is make, making angle theta so whenever you have a right angle triangle this one the angle is always with the base so this side is a base for you this side because along the base the second angle that is for hypotenuse and this one is a perpendicular so basically part difference in this case the part difference is perpendicular you can see here in this figure like this is a part difference this is the extra distance which the one wave cover more than the other so we are finding this distance the, the distance between the two slits is given by a or you can also use d because normally we will use d that's why i'm representing by d so if i use a right angle triangle here if i want the part difference so this is a perpendicular this one is hypotenuse so if we have perpendicular and hypotenuse we use the formula that sine theta is equals to perpendicular divided by hypotenuse so sine theta is equals to perpendicular what is the perpendicular here perpendicular is a part difference which we don't know we call that as a part difference and hypotenuse what is the hypotenuse in this case the hypotenuse is equals to d so if d, this d is divided other side it will be multiplied so we can say that d sine theta is equal to the path difference is it clear till this point about the d sine theta is equals to the part difference And after knowing the part difference, then after knowing the part difference, now we can conclude because we know if there's a constructive interference for constructive interference, the part difference should be equal to so when the two waves interfere the part difference for constructive interference should be equal to n lambda so as we know whenever there are two slits the part difference between the two waves is given by d sine theta so we can say that d sine theta 
is equals to n lambda. So where what is d? d is the distance between the two slits. What is n? n is called order of the image. For like example, when we observe this, the image on the screen, at the center, at the center we will always have a bright. So we say that is a zero order image. Then after bright we have dark. And then after dark we will have bright. So we call that as a first order. Then after bright there will be another dark. Then after dark there will be another bright. So that will be the second order. And same thing. So central of the, the center part of the screen is known as the zero order image, which is known as the central maxima. Below that, we will have dark because of destructive interference, then we'll have bright. So first bright below that, we also call that as a first order image. Then there will be a dark and then bright. So that is known as a second order image. So the image, the order of image refers to like where the central maxima is called a zero order image. And when it is a zero order image, it means the value of n is zero. When I substitute value of n is zero, it means d sine theta will be equal to zero. And like example, the two waves, when they combine at the center, they don't have any part difference. They actually cover the same distance. That's why the d sine theta will be equal to zero. Or we say the zero order image. But if it is a first or after at center will have bright, then dark, and then there will be a bright. So that is known as the first order image above central or below central. Both cases, it is a first order image. So whenever there's a constructive interference, so D sine theta should be equal to N lambda, where N is the order of the image. But what will happen if there is a destructive interference? So if there's a destructive interference, two waves can completely cancel out the effect of each other. So what should be the part difference? The part difference in that case should be equal to n plus half lambda. Where n again is the order of image, but this time n, this n is for the dark. Like example, this is for dark, this is n is equals to one, the first dark where n is equals to one, the second dark n is equals to two, the third dark n is equals to three. And same thing, the first dark below the central maxima, that is n is equals to one, the second dark n is equals to two. And we know whenever there's a interference of a wave, when it is passing through a slit, the always the d sine theta will be the part difference, but because of destructive interference, it will be n plus half lambda. So for constructive interference, it should be n lambda d sine theta is m lambda, where destructive interference d sine theta is equals to n plus half lambda. Is it uh, clear this derivation that how we derive a formula for interference of wave when it is passing through the slit? So example, if there's a question related to this, if they say that the distance between the slit example is 0 0.1 meter, the distance is given. And they mention that the central, like the first ma maxima, so if it is a first maxima, first ma center, center always there is a maxima means a bright, then there will be dark and then bright. So first maxima means the first image. So if it's a maxima, first maxima, what is the value of n? n is equals to one. And we want to find the wavelength. If the theta or the angle is given, say three degrees. So we want to work out the wavelength. If there is a maxima, whenever there is a maxima, what we will use, we will use a formula that d sine theta, the part difference, 
is equals to n lambda where n is d is a gap the distance between the two slits so it is 0 0.1 then it is sine 5 degrees because the n, sorry 3 degrees the angle is 3 then n is the order of image example 1 and lambda is there so what is the answer for sine 3 multiplied by 0 0.1 So when we multiply these two factors, it will be 5.2 into next power minus 3. That will be the wavelength of this wave. So we work out the wavelength of a wave by using this formula. So sometimes the wavelength might be given, angle is given, and you need the distance. Sometimes uh, like this distance between the slit, sometimes the distance between the slits and wavelength are given and you need an angle. So it can be other way around. Uh, also, how the question might change, because in this one, we are talking about the maxima, but sometimes they say that you have minima here. And this is a second minima. What is the meaning of second minima? Like example, the center is always a maxima. After maxima, there will be first minima, and then there will be a maxima and then minima. So this is because we are talking about a minima. So here n is equals to 1. And in this one, n is equals to Two. And because it is a minima, so we have to use a formula that n plus half lambda is equals to d sine theta or d sine theta is equals to n plus half lambda. So if I give you the distance, say this is 0 0.1. And the theta, the angle is example, um, 2 degrees. So what is the value of n? We'll substitute because it is a sec second minima. So value of n should be 2. So we'll put 2 plus half. So it will be 2.5 lambda. Is equals to d sin theta and when we are substituting the value like example because the first minima is there which is which should have a uh, part difference of uh, like lambda by 2 so here when first minima is there then n, n is equals to 0 for first minima because we are talking about the first minima so part difference should be lambda by 2. So n is equals to 2 and this should be n is equals to 1. So instead of n is equals to 2, I should put n is equals to 1. What is the reason for that? Because when we have first minima, the part difference is half wavelength. When we have second minima, part difference is 1.5 wavelength. Third minima will have a part difference of 2.5. So it is a second minima. That's why I should put n is equals to 1. So first minima n is 0, second minima n is 1. So when we substitute, it will be 1.5 wavelengths is equals to d, which is 0 0.1 and sine 2 degrees. And lambda is equals to 0 0.1 into sine 2 divided by 1.5. So what's the answer when we substitute these values? So when we substitute, when we substitute the value, it will be 2.3 into 10 power minus 3 meter. So that is the wavelength of this wave. So using this formula, it depends on the question that whether it is a constructive or destructive interference. So when you're taking the value of n, like when we are taking the value of the n, so the central maxima, like because order, what we'll take, this is for central maxima, zero. Then the first maxima n is one, second maxima n is two. But order for the dark one, the first dark n is zero, the second dark n is one. And same thing, first dark below the center zero, and the second dark below the center is one. Because that's a first order, zero order max minima and first order minima. Whereas the central, it is a zero order maxima, first order maxima, second order maxima. So this is how we order the image 
because that's important if you use a different value for n you will get a wrong result then the distance between the two consecutive maxima or two consecutive minima like this is one maxima a bright fringe this is also another maxima so distance between the two maxima is given by a formula x like denoted by x which is also known as the distance between the two lines of fringes so this distance is inversely proportional to the slit the distance between the slit like example if we have two slits which are having like this is one case this is d d is the distance between the two slits so if you are using a small d like small d it means the gap between the consecutive maxima will be more and if we use greater distance between the two fringes uh, two slits then the gap between the two maxima will be smaller so like we will have very closely spaced patterns will be there so if we for example if we do if we reduce the gap then this spacing will increase the spacing means the distance between the bright two bright regions but if we reduce the gap or if we increase the gap then the spacing between the central maxima will decrease so like example say the, the for this pattern is example for a narrow gap when there is a narrow gap smaller distance is there between the two slits we'll have more distance between the fringes but if we have a wider gap and diffraction occur so what will happen the the fringes the dark and the bright regions they will be closer to each other like the next bright and dark will be much closer to each other or the distance between the two bright region will be smaller here the distance is more so how the patterns are different because it depends on d so if d is a small this pattern will be the distance will be more so here because this x is greater so it means d is smaller here the distance between the two fringes is smaller so it means the d is because x is smaller so it means d is greater the gap between the two slits is higher so first thing on which it depends on is the gap size the distance between the two slits the second thing the distance between the screen and the slit is directly proportional to the distance between the fringes like if we have what will happen like if i use a screen which is far away so two possibilities are there i can place a screen closer i can place a screen away so what kind of difference we will observe if the screen the distance between the screen and the slit is denoted by l so if we increase the distance as you can see here if we increase the distance between the uh, slit and the screen the fringes will be more space like broad fringes will be there the gap between the fringes will be more between dark and bright but if two if you place a screen closer to it so the distance between the maxima and the minima or the two successive maximas or two successive minimas it will be smaller so the pattern will change as we move the screen away from the slits so if slits like l1 is there it is x1 and l2 is there that is x2 so you can clearly see when the screen is placed closer to the diffraction grating or the grating element the slits 
when they or the slit so as a result what happened the fringes are closely spaced but as we move the screen away from this we'll find that the distance between the fringes increases fringes means lines so distance between the lines of the fringes or successive maxima or minima increased and the third factor on which it depends is the wavelength if we use longer wavelength it will have more spacing between the gap lines as compared to shorter wavelength so for example if we place a screen and we only change like we did not change the screen we just change the wavelength if we are using a shorter wavelength then these fringes will be closely spaced if you are using a longer wavelength then the gap or the distance between the fringes will increase so here lambda is smaller and here the lambda is greater so this is how all the factors affect this diffraction number 1 it is inversely proportional to the distance between the slits it is directly proportional to distance between screen and the slit and it is directly proportional to the wavelength used is it clear the concept of diffraction and the diffraction patterns any question or doubt till this point the young's double slit experiment in which he explained the formation of a bright and dark fringes due to diffraction and interference of the light then what is a grating element look if we have like a, a like two slits are there we called diffraction grating but if we have many slits we call that as a grating element so the main difference here between the diffraction grating and grating element basically grating element is the one which cause a splitting but normally like in two slits we have only like two slits are there and we place a screen and as a result of diffraction and interference what we'll observe we'll observe bright and dark fringes bright and dark regions are there that is due to constructive and destructive interference what about the diffraction grating or grating element means the diffraction grating or grating element means it is having many slits not only two there are many slits in small space so when we have many slits in a small space what we call this we call that as a grating element or diffraction grating so what is a diffraction grating or grating element it is an optical component with a periodic structure like periodic structure means when something repeat we call that as a periodic structure and that diffract the light into several beam because when the light is passing the light will spread out there are many slits so light will spread out from this one the light will spread out from the second one so there are so many diffraction like so many waves diffracted out from this and what we call this we call that as a diffraction grating or grating element and it uses the same principle it uses the same concept same way that if the part difference if there is a constructive interference the part difference will be because we know the part difference should be n lambda if there is a constructive interference and if there is a destructive interference the part difference will be n plus half lambda here d sin theta also and here also d because that is the formula whenever the wave passes through a gap it diffracts and interferes the part difference is given by d sin theta if it is a constructive interference a bright fringe is there then it will be equal to n lambda if this is a destructive interference it will be n plus half lambda so how to work out how to find the value of the d how i will know like d is the distance between the two slits so the formula to get the value of the d or we also say a so d is equals to number of line per meter
so number of lines per meter or per millimeter that will give because si unit of distance is meter that's why it should be per meter so how many lines are there per meter in one meter we that will give us a value for d like example if i see there are 400 lines of 400 basically 400 slits are there if i say there are 400 slits or 400 lines lines or slit here same means it refers to this part so 400 lines are there per meter i want to find the value of a d so how i can find the value of the d so d is equals to number of lines per meter so it's d is equals to 1 divided by 400 so when we so d is actually the distance between the two successive slits or two successive opening so it is 1 divided by 400 which will be equal to 0 0.0025 meter so this is how we find the value of a d so 0 0.0025 and then we use the same concept if it is a constructive interference we'll use that d sine theta is n lambda if there's a destructive interference we use the formula n plus half lambda is equals to d sine theta where n is refers to the order of the image and at the center we'll have the maximum intensity like example here is bright the central maxima constructive interference bright the first order image there is also bright but when we compare the intensity this will have high intensity and this will have low intensity because when the two waves are traveling after diffraction, when the waves are diffracted, their intensity is decreasing as they diffract more. So the, when the waves are reaching at this point, maximum intensity, but as they diffract and reach the other point due to interference, so the intensity is relatively decrease. So the probability of all the sources constructively interfere at a point is low. And it only occur at a specific point, which we call them as a maxima. Maxima is much more well defined. A bright point here. When we see a, no, a two slit, double slit experiment, the maxima are a bit blur. But here in diffraction grating or grating element, the maximas are well defined, like their edges are very clear. And maxima are brighter as more light go through when compared to two source experiment and light containing multiple wavelength can split up by diffraction grating into individual wavelength like a prism larger wavelength larger angular spacing means if we use a longer wavelength the splitting of pattern will be more obvious like greater diffraction will be there and again we use a formula that d sine theta is equals to n lambda if it is a constructive interference and if there's a destructive interference then it will be d sine theta is n plus half lambda so this was about the interference the diffraction now we'll do some questions related to this topic